The first 100 days, President Trump diving into his first full week, signing three executive orders, including his promise to remove the U.S. from the Trans-Pacific Partnership deal. So what can we expect going forward? Here now is former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee, former Republican presidential candidate and Fox News contributor. Boy, so what is your take so far? G give me your, your spin on what you've been watching. I know you have something pithy waiting. Well, this is a pretty big day. I mean, he starts out with business executives and manufacturing leaders. Then he goes to uh, talk to union people. I mean, he's covered the full spectrum of business in his first day in office. I think Donald Trump is off to a great start, and the press may hate it, and the protesters on Saturday may, you know, cry themselves to sleep for months, and that's their right to do. But Donald Trump is showing that he is trying to bring this country together from the people who lead the companies to the people who work on the factory floors. I think it's a great start. So within the business community, one of the articles that was getting so much play today um, was this total of the Trump administration is looking to cut $10.5 trillion in spending. I can't tell you how many people either emailed me or tweeted me or something and said, could that possibly be true? When you look down at the details, he wants to privatize the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, eliminate the National Endowment for the Arts, the National Endowment for the Humanities. He wants to target corporate welfare in the Commerce Department. I mean, he's got a whole list in, in, uh, in the Justice Department, all the way down to $10.5 trillion over the next 10 years. Governor, what do you think about that? Can he achieve that? Is it too much, too little? Well, I think you have to give him until at least Thursday to get that done. <laughs> he won't be able to get all of that done today. No, look, he's got a battle on his hands to do many of these things because he does have to go through Congress, and there's going to be an enormous pushback, not just from Democrats, but a lot of it will come from Republicans because everybody has their pet causes and pet projects, and that's part of the process. And we have a government that, by its design, goes slow so that you don't just get to do things uh, without some thoughtful uh, consideration of the impact. But one thing Donald Trump has clearly shown us, even on day one, this is a man who came with a set of promises, yeah. and he's dead serious about keeping them. And I think we're going to see a lot of extraordinary action. And Melissa, the biggest thing he's going to do by bringing this business climate into focus, he's going to give us something better than just a tax break and certainly better than just spending cuts. He's going to put Americans to work. It's a double whammy. Yeah. People getting paychecks and not having to take a welfare check. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. I was in D.C. over the weekend, and when you look around, you know, part of his speech was people here have gotten wealthy while others, you know, have just been left in the wake. Um, and that's certainly, you know, something the crowd seemed to respond to. In the meantime, celebrities against Donald Trump. A-listers joining the millions of people around the nation protesting President Trump. Some of them might be taking it a little too far. Yes, I'm angry. Yes, I am outraged. Yes, I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. Uh, is she dressed up like the cat burglar there? I mean, what is like the little ears as she's talking about blowing up the White House? I, I mean, I don't know. I, you know, I don't, I don't know what I'm even to respond yeah. to with that other than I think there was a knock on her door early this morning and it was the Secret Service and they like to talk to her about making threats of blowing up the White House. Melissa, can you imagine what would have happened to someone if they had been, let's say, a conservative and at a Tea Party rally talked about blowing up the White House when Barack Obama was there? Right. I mean, we would never hear the end of it, not only on the media, but there would be law enforcement action taken. People have a right to protest. I fully respect that. It's one of the things I love about America. People have a right to be loud and obnoxious. They have a right to be stupid. But they don't have a right to threaten other people, and they don't have a right uh, to, to go and uh, create anarchy. Yeah. And one of the things that struck me about the Saturday protest was, sure, there were a lot of sincere people, but I couldn't figure out exactly what it was they wanted. It's, it's the only thing they seemed to want was they'd like to vote again. And they get to do that in four years, but I'm sorry, the election's over. They've got to live with the results like we all have to every uh, time we have an election, and they don't seem to understand that. Yeah, interesting. All right, Governor Mike Huckabee, thank you.